If Dick Sean had ergophobia, would he still be as funny? <laughs> when Dorothy Lyman sees a Google, does she quickly run and hide? <laughs> if Richard Mall showed you his ballywick, would you autograph it? <laughs> we'll find out the answer to these questions and a lot more as we play television's funniest new game show, Wordplay. And here's your host, that man of many words, Tom Kennedy. Good day to you all. Welcome, my friends, to Wordplay, game of fascinating words, funny definitions, and lots of cash. And to give us those definitions, of course, we have met our celebrity panel, and we welcome them back, especially Dorothy Lyman from Mama's Family. Let's see, your name is what? Naomi, huh? Yes, I play Naomi, Vicky's daughter-in-law. How mm -hmm. are things going on that show? I tell you, they're going great. There is life after cancellation. You know, we're in first round <laughs> syndication, and we're, we're tied for number one. So we're Congratulations. <laughs> Way to go. Let's go over now and meet our contestants. Our returning champ is Mr. Joseph Dunn. I remember you're a magician. Uh, you had $2,325 from yesterday. We have a new challenger today. Judy, Judith it is. Judith Kirk, huh? Right. Tell us about yourself, Judith. Well, I'm a native Californian, mm -hmm. and I reside right now in Marina Del Rey, uh -huh. and I am a soft sculpturist. <laughs> what is that? I take pantyhose and stuff them with cotton and make people out of them and things. You've seen those funny looking things. You're under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> How does she get on this show? Yeah, I mean, this is not cable, you know. Welcome, Judith. Good luck Thank to you. you. Thank Here's you. how we play our game. We're going to be playing today with nine words, all found, of course, in the dictionary. And those words are bailiwick, Google, ubiquitous, petulant, ergophobia, metal, sedition, wizened and laconic. Now, you contestants are going to pick these words one at a time. Our celebrities will be giving you definitions. Then you're going to decide which is the right definition. Of course, there will only be one of those. And when you are right, you'll win some money. And whoever's ahead after we play six words will have a shot at our speed round, which today is worth $10,000. <laughs> yes. But with one more thing, one of those words is a bonus word that can win you a Caribbean cruise. Yes. Let's show the home audience what that bonus word is for today. And now they know, but you don't. And Joseph, you are our returning champ. First word is yours. Which one, sir? Tom, may I please try Bailiwick? All right. What do you say, Dick? It's Bailiwick. Oh, Bail what? Bailiwick. Bailiwick. A Bailiwick means it's an area of expertise. Ah. Originally, there was a Bales bondman ah. who had the expertise of being able to accumulate enough money so he could give to people to keep them from going out of jail to pay their bail. His expertise was in the area of robbing banks. <laughs> Could you boil it down? Please? Expertise. <laughs> All right, this is <laughs> Dorothy. A bailiwick is a lobster trap, but up in Maine, the lobsters have become very smart, so the fishermen have to be even cagier. Now they have to bait those traps with fishnet stockings and pinups of naked halibuts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> of naked halibuts. Richard Mall. A bailiwick is a fool. Like Mr. T says, I pity the bailiwick. <laughs> this one bailiwick crashed his car through the front of a fast food joint, you know. The owner was suing for damages, but the guy said, it wasn't my fault. The sign said, drive through window. <laughs> I pity that fool. Here yeah. it is. <laughs> that fool. All right. Do you think the right definition is area of expertise, or do you think it's lobster trap, or do you think it is fool? Area of expertise, please. All right. Was Dick Sean giving us the right definition? He was. We go over to Bailey Wick. We find that that is worth $50, and that puts you on the scoreboard for today. Now we go over to Judith, our soft sculpturist. <laughs> Judith, I want to remind you, see, there's $50 up there. Now, if you pick a word that is connected to that 50 and you win your word, you'll not only win the money behind your word, but you got the 50 as well. What word would you like next? Doesn't matter. Petulant. Uh, petulant. She doesn't want to connect her. That's no. all right. Why are you picking it just for kick? Why are you picking petulant? Because I think I know the... You think you know what it is. We'll soon find out. Dorothy, tell her about this. Well, petulant means underhanded. It comes from the Latin word petulum, which means to steal. Actually, uh, stealing goes back way before even Rome. There used to be 11 commandments. Somebody stole one. Ah. <laughs> I see. So, Dorothy, it means underhanded. underhanded. Oh. Richard? 
petulant. Petulant means impatient. People who go to a 7-Eleven are very petulant. Ah. They want to be served now. I mean, don't you hate it when you go to a fancy restaurant and you have to wait forever for your Slurpee? That's impatient. Enough. Oh, yes. You betcha. We must do something about that, too. Yes. Dick, petulant. Petulant means mm -hmm. resistance. To resist one. It started when they used to use dog spray on dogs at the pets. And the pets became very petulant because they resisted the fact that this spray would put on them. The spray was to kill the fleas. Uh -huh. Before the spray was put on, these fleas used to make them scratch themselves all over. Yeah. And their uh, master would scratch them all over. I'm talking all over. And they felt so good. And then they put the spray on, the, the fleas died, and then they had no more sex life. <laughs> if you had to boil that down to a word. I would boil it down uh, uh, to resistance. To resistance. A definite right. resistance. Yeah. <laughs> Judith? You picked that word because you said, I know what petulant means. I didn't say I knew. I said I thought I you knew. You think you know. All right. <laughs> now is I it... don't know. <laughs> I told you. Is it resistant, underhanded, um... or impatient? <laughs> resistant. Is that right? Oh, no. <laughs> Joseph, there are only two definitions left, underhanded or impatient. Now, which is it? Impatient. Impatient. Is he right? <laughs> he is right. It is impatient. So Judith didn't know it after all. I told you, when they get through with it, you have no idea who is coming to <laughs> That was unconnected, but you get 25 bucks added to your uh, score. It gives you a total of $75. All right. Well, now, folks, have we added to your vocabulary? I hope we've added to your fun. We'll be doing more of it right after this. Back to round two. We have raised the money amounts behind the words. The bonus word is still up there. Somebody can win a Caribbean trip. And remember, when you pick a word connected with a dollar amount, you can increase your earnings. All right, champ. Joseph, you're next. Tom, I like to shoot for Google. He wants to shoot for Google, and that, of course, is a uh, connector to 50 up there. Richard Mall, Google is the word. Google is a bad idea. It's like one of the new television shows they came up with the networks. It's a combination. Uh, it's a combination of uh, police drama and talent hunt. It's hmm. called strip search. <laughs> it's called strip search. Yeah. Hey, we're both times anyway. Okay, here it is. It's a bad idea, like yeah. this joke that I just told. <laughs> Dick? Oh. It's a number one followed by a hundred zeros. Obviously. Picture this, a number one, which would be the leader, the general oh. as an army. And a hundred zeros hmm. marching proudly, listening to the orders of the number one, following, obedient, a hundred, hundred zeros after a one. I'll be done. Make that in dollar signs, and you have the national debt. <laughs> <laughs> that is a thing. <laughs> number one, followed by a hundred zeros, yeah. means we're going bankrupt. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We've got to get rid of the Googles in Washington now. Dorothy? A Google is, in fact, a commercial slogan, like the taco place in my neighborhood. This new slogan is, breakfast isn't boring anymore. Well, after a couple of their jalapeno pancakes, believe me, your day will be anything but boring. <laughs> a uh, commercial slogan. Mm -hmm. Joseph, you started all this. <clears throat> is Google number one followed by 100 zeros, or is it a commercial slogan, or is it a bad idea? Tom, it said number one, followed by a hundred zeros. Was Dick right? You were right! Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Google was worth $150. It connects to $50. So we add 200 to your score for a total of now $275. All right, Judith. Now, we have three dollar amounts up there, and you're up next. Oh, let's go for ergophobia. Let's go over here, and we'll start with Dick. Ergophobia is the fear of heights. I'm not talking about only high heights. Uh -huh. I'm talking about low heights. Oh. Yes, a recent case study of a man standing on a 40-story building. Mm. Looking down had ergophobia because he was a fear of heights. He slipped and started to fall from that high height. Mm. When he got to the low height, which was about three feet, just before he was about to strike <laughs> the sidewalk, yeah. he not only had ergophobia, <laughs> He was thinking how much more wonderful it was when he was high. 
So, it's a fair of height. Dorothy? Ergophobia is, 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 can't even say it now. It's a fear of animals, like the family next door to me. The husband's afraid of sheep, the wife is afraid of tortoises, their kid is afraid of turtleneck sweaters. <laughs> fear of animals. Fear of animals. Lots of fear in that family. This is my Ergophobia is the fear of work. Mm. That's why I'm in this business, as a matter of fact. Yeah. <laughs> it stems from the belief that when you punch a time clock, it will punch you back. <laughs> Judith, you're right on top of this one, aren't oh. you? Yeah. yeah. Right. Ergophobia, is it fear of heights, fear of animals, or fear of work? If I keep going with Dick, I may get one right. <laughs> Let's go with fear of heights. All right, is Dickie Poo right again? <laughs> All right, Joseph, there are two definitions left. Is it fear of animals or fear of work? What do you think? Fear of work. Fear of work, he says, as Richard Mall stated. Is that right? And it is right. He strikes again. Ergophobia was worth uh, $100, and that's connected to $225, so we add $325 to your score for a grand total of $600. Yes, indeed, Joseph. Now, it's time once again for a break, and we're going to come back with our final two words. We'll have bigger money amounts behind there, and don't forget the bonus word is still at large. We'll see what happens after this. amounts have been once again up behind our uh, words that remain. There are five words left. Our champion Joseph is up now. Lots of money on the board. Joseph, next pick is yours. Which word? Tom, may I please try metal? Metal, he says. And we go now to Dorothy for metal, Dorothy. Metal means strong character. For example, a good test of one's metal would be to see if you could actually tell how many times Bill Cosby's name appears on the credits of The Cosby Show. Uh, uh, means strong character. Uh -huh. Richard? Metal, spelled M-E-T-T-L-E. -E. Thank means you. Means something that is uh, easily broken, something that is brittle. Examples of something that is metal would be um, uh, ancient documents, fine china, ah, Johnny Carson's marriages. <laughs> Very brittle. Very brittle. That's brittle. I got gotcha. you. Dick, Sean, straighten us out on this, would you? Okay, obviously. Metal, metal means anger. To be angered is to metal, like... The other day, I was pulling out of this lot, my car. I was just at a video rental center. I was getting some of the old Gilligan uh, Island rerun type oh. thing. <laughs> so this car smashes me, and I was angered. I mean, I was full of metal. Not just metal, but like real metal. The grill became part of my rib cage. Ah, I see. I was full of metal and metal. So obviously, the answer has to be anger. Anger, yes. Oh, is metal uh, anger? Is metal strong character, or is it very brittle? Strong character, Dorothy. Strong character, is that right? It is. Joe strikes again. Metal is worth $100. Connected to $325, so we add $425 to your score for a total of $1,025. We're going over now to Judith, and all I can say is you need this one, don't you, Judith? Yes, oh, how I do. you need it. I don't oh. know what all those money amounts add up to, but we'll it's find out if you get this right. Of course, if you don't get it right, Joseph is the winner. So let's go no. for it. Pick one. Wizened. Wizened, she says. All right, wizened it is. Richard Mall. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to shoot myself, I don't know! No, I'll take a stab at it, okay? I'll take a stab, all right? All right, all right, the word is wizen. Wizen means mm, noticeable, very noticeable. Uh, something that stands out. <laughs> something that just doesn't belong. Oh. Like a bacon, lettuce, and Snickers sandwich, for example. <laughs> it means noticeable. It means noticeable, thank you very much. I'll get you for this. Dick. I agree with him. Oh, okay, then we go next to Dorothy. No, no, uh -huh. that's his version. But I believe that wizen, <laughs> wizen means dried oh, and shrunken. Now, a prune or a raisin, it would be like, it would be like Dr. Ruth's fourth husband, dried and shrunken. 
Used up is what I'm trying to say. Uh-huh. All right. So you become dried and pruned uh -huh. when you stick your nose out. Uh-huh. Dried up, dried and, up and, and shrunken. All right. Dorothy, uh, tell us about wizened or, or wizened. Well, I say wizened, even though it means very wise, like the, the three wise men, uh -huh. except those were actually two wise men and one wise guy. Uh, two wise men came bearing gifts. The wise guy was bearing a grudge. I see. He's very yes. wise. Very wise. Judith, wizened or wizened is either dried up and shrunken or very wise or noticeable. What is it? Dried up and shrunken. <laughs> she yeah. says dried up and shrunken. This man right here, Dick John, you're going to go with what he said. What? Oh, what is that right? Here he The drama is not over with you. We don't know what all those things add up to. They have to be over $1,025. But whether you win or lose, you did a good job. That's for sure. Wizen is worth, it's worth $300, connected to $425, for, oh, for a total of $725. Joseph, you are still our champ. But that was a good try. Get rid of that. Good try. Yeah. I'm sorry. It was very wise. And I thought, oh my God, I would do that time. Thank you for playing our game. Nice parting gifts for you. Joseph, come on over here. He's our champ once again. He got a total of $1,000. Way to go. I would have got that one wrong. I would have said no. Is that right? I would have said no. You would have gotten that one wrong. When we come back, you'll have a chance at our speed round for what? $10,000? I don't believe it. Come on down here. done as a contestant on this show, and a very successful one, too, $1,025 in this show. Of course, yesterday's winnings, you can add to that. We'll talk about it later. Now, we're going to play a speed round, and our celebrities are pulling for you, and the object of the game is to get from one side of the board to the other by connecting boxes. And hidden behind each box are two definitions of a single word. For example, if you went to box number seven, and it read pitching tool and road split, you would know that they both define fork. And then you go on to number eight, of course. And if you saw a uh, social group and caveman's weapon, you would know that that would be club. So if you guess the word, the box is indeed yours. However, if you are incorrect, let's say, for instance, you went to box number nine, and you read up there tree covering and dog noise, and you did not know that they both define bark, then that box becomes a block and then you have to go around the block to get across the board all boxes going across the board must be connected side by side starting with the first box and you can only go to another box now listen by either giving a correct answer or by saying pass and the bell will tell you when you are right now would you repeat all that please thank you very much now <laughs> You know how to play. We're pulling for you. Good luck to you, Joseph, for $10,000. We're going to start the clock for 45 seconds, and we'll start that as soon as you pick the first box. Go. Seven. All right. Not hot. Common disease. Cold. Eight. Go. Uh, dried plum. Cut branches. Prune. Go. Nine. Use visa. Brigade command. Vice. Versa. Visa. Uh... Bank America, um, uh, pass. I right, pass. 14. Right, down to 14. Uh, mob contract, popular movie. Mob contract. Contract. Pass. All right, where do you want to go? Two. Up to uh, Stereo component, public orator. Speaker. Go. Three. Vacation journey, uh, fall clumsy. Tumble. Uh, uh, be, be right. Stumble. Uh, oh, my goodness. So oh, I tell you, you hit some formidable blocks there, but you did get three hundred dollars. We'll come back and tell you about those blocks. We'll also tell you about your money right after that. Stumble through this time. All right, we're back. Joseph didn't get over there for $10,000. That means we're going to add $2,500 for tomorrow's. But let's go over and take a look at those blocks. On so number three, uh, it says vacation journey and fall clumsily. It was trip. Trip. Yeah. Trip. Yeah, number nine, uh, use visa and brigade command. 
You, charge. That's it. Charge. charge. The light brigade. That's uh huh. Right. And they were, of course, referring to the Visa card. Now, the number 14, it was mob contract and popular movie, and that would be. A hit. That's it. Yeah. Once you have a couple of extra seconds to think it out, it's not too easy. <laughs> <laughs> but you got a total of 1025 In the speed round, one to three blocks for $300. That's a 1325 for today. A two-day total of $3,650. Oh, wow. Thank you, Tom. And, of course, you can come back tomorrow because you are allowed to stay on the show for a maximum of three shows. You're going to come back tomorrow? I'll be back. I hope you are, too. Well, to me, tomorrow we'll be going for $12,500. See you then on Wordplay. All right. Today's runner-up on Wordplay will receive a symphonic VHS HQ video cassette recorder with wireless remote, 14-day four-event program timer, eight hours recording, digital clock, electronic tape counter, furnished by Symphonic. Some member of our studio audience today will receive a service merchandise gift certificate, famous name brand items. Select from our 500-page catalog or redeem at one of our stores, furnished by Service Merchandise.